Incorporating vegetables into the landscape is becoming more and more popular and we've tried to show you a way of doing that here in our edible landscape theme garden that was designed by some of our students here in Stillwater at our OSU campus. Now we've already harvested some of the violas and lettuce, nasturtiums and kohlrabi and Barbara showed us some ways in using that. Well today we're going to harvest some more of the edible flowers. One in particular is the Shungiku edible chrysanthemum that's right here in front of me. Now we've kind of made a mistake. If you're looking at it from that direction, it looks like we've done it correctly that we put the height in the very back. But really, we look at it from this other side. And in reading the description of this edible chrysanthemum, it said it grows about four to six inches. Well, the students and myself both, we misread that many times. Really what they're saying is to keep it pruned to four to six inches. And as you can see, we did that initially, but they are very aggressive growers. Now they're really too far gone as far as their edible portion, but they make nice flowers. So we're going to have to pull them up because they're blocking the view of our edible landscape. So really they should be behind where the height where you can allow them to grow and enjoy the flowers at the same time, which are edible at the same time as well. Now again, we're going to prune them out, and Barb is going to show some ways to use those <clears throat> in a little bit. But also, we have some very interesting marigolds. We have two different types, the gem series. We have tangerine gem, which is more of an orangish color, and lemon gem has uh, yellow flowers. And the neat thing about it, the flowers are very delicate and dainty, also edible, but the foliage is very lacy, and it has a very nice aroma to it when you brush against it. Now, when we harvest them, you can harvest by cutting out several of the flowers individually or just uh, trimming the entire plant. And one thing that we've done, we've noticed that any time we shear them pretty heavily, if we'll come back with a nitrogen application of ammonium nitrate, urea, or a slow release like blood meal, something like that, we get a little bit more growth to them. Now, they all prefer full sun, good, rich soil. And if you notice, we're talking about marigolds and mums, but it's just like mushrooms. You don't want to eat anything you're not sure about. And we know these are registered and labeled in the information as edible plants so we're comfortable in doing it. There are different species from the traditional ones so you want to be careful in any time you're eating edible flowers. Well now we want to join Barb in the kitchen and see what kind of unusual recipe she's got to fix these particular flowers. This year, having all the edible flowers in the garden is a new experience for me, as I hope it is for you. This is something that I must admit that I've not had a lot of experience doing or eating, so it's been a lot of fun for me and my family as we work through the process of trying to find some things to do with some of the flowers that have been grown out there. What we're working with today are the little marigolds that have been grown. Now, you notice that we have the lemon and the tangerine varieties out here, and they do have a little bit different flavor and a little bit different smell to them, so you may, if you're really a connoisseur, not want to mix them. What I'm going to do for today, I have mixed them. Now, most varieties of marigolds would be edible in the, from the standpoint that they're not poisonous. However, they don't taste very good. This is one of the few varieties that we do recommend eating uh, so that uh, this would be the, the one that you'd want to choose. Now, on this, even on this type, you don't want to eat uh, the stems or the foliage. So what I've done with the recipe today is go through one at a time and pull off all the little petals uh, for the recipe I'm working on. Now, what I'm going to try and do for you today is something called marigold soup. And this is one that my husband actually approved of, so it must be pretty good. All right, we're going to start with four cups of chicken broth, and you can e either use canned or use your own. Now, the recipe also calls for two teaspoons of salt. Now, wanting to cut back on salt, this is one of the things I did do. I've used a reduced sodium chicken broth, but I've also cut back to a half a teaspoon of salt. We also have a fourth of a teaspoon of ground pepper and a pinch of cloves. Then we have, out of the garden also, we have uh, a little bit of fresh oregano. Now this is about a fourth of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon, depending on how much you like it. Now if you were going to use dried oregano, you would use less. Uh, if you're going to use the fresh, as we did here today, uh, you want to make sure that the leaves are in good condition, that you don't have any damage from insects or uh, dirt. You want to rinse them lightly with water. If you're not going to use them right away, you can wrap them up in a paper towel and uh, then put that in a plastic bag and put them in the refrigerator for a few days. But this does work really nice. It's got a good, strong flavor. And, and if you've got a chance to use some of that, I'd really encourage you to. Now, also in here, we're going to use uh, about a teaspoon of fresh parsley. And we'll sprinkle that in. 
This is then going to go on the stove and it's going to cook at a, at a simmer, bring it to a boil and reduce it to a simmer and let it do so for about 30 minutes to concentrate it a little bit and give the flavors a little bit of a chance to blend before we add the flowers and the potatoes to that. While the marigold stock is getting blended together. I wanted to talk to you also about edible chrysanthemums. If you can see here, these are also called shungiku and these are the, the foliage from them. Now normally you would harvest the foliage when the plant is about four to six inches high. Uh, it would be then used similar to the way you would use oh, any other kind of greens as far as boiling it down. Uh, it might take a little bit longer than spinach but it doesn't take a long time to cook. It's got a piquant flavor and uh, is very good. However, we didn't harvest them until they were substantially taller than that and just like a lot of other greens, when they get bigger they get bitter and they tend to get tougher so that I'm not going to try and prepare these for you today. Uh, but if you do want to do them, you need to harvest them when they're very young and very small. We did try harvesting side shoots and that didn't work very well either. They still had the, the strong flavor uh, that we didn't like very well. Now, on these flowers, however, at this point in time, the other alternative is to let the flowers go ahead and, and come to a bloom. Once again, if you remove the stem, uh, from this flower. The flower itself then becomes edible and can be used as a garnish as we've done over here on this salad. Now, uh, we talked a couple of weeks ago about using flowers and I reminded you not to use something that's got a real strong flavor if you're using it in something that you're going to want to eat because it will cover the flavor of the flower itself. So that use a very mild type of, of dressing, use a, an oil and vinegar with just a little bit of an herb in it. Uh, you could actually blend in some of the, the lemon flavored marigolds which would give it a real nice taste as well and give it a little bit of a, a lemon scent to it uh, while you ate that. Once the potatoes are tender, your soup is ready. You'll notice that uh, in addition to the potatoes getting tender, the flowers have also softened substantially. They give a lot of nice fragrance to the soup. It's not a real thick traditional type of potato soup, but the flowers have colored the potatoes a little bit yellow. And we have the other herbs in there that also add fragrance. This isn't quite as much yellowing as you might get from turmeric and definitely not quite the same effect you'd get from saffron, but it's really nice. Now to this you can add a few croutons and maybe a few of your flowers floating in the soup. Combine that with your salad and a loaf of bread and you've got a really nice meal. For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown.